Now let's go over some angular acceleration physics problems. Let's start with this one. A wheel speeds up to 30 radians per second from rest in 5 seconds. What is the average angular acceleration of the wheel? So what equation do we need to calculate the average angular acceleration? The average angular acceleration is equal to the change in the angular velocity divided by the change in time. So let's make a list of what we have. The initial angular speed is 0 because it speeds up from rest. The final angular speed is 30 radians per second. And the change in time is 5 seconds. So we have a change of angular speed of 30 radians per second. And we're going to divide it by 5 seconds. So 30 divided by 5 is 6. So the average angular acceleration is 6 radians per second squared. So this is the answer to the first problem. Number two, a disk slows down from 85 radians per second to 25 radians per second in four seconds. What is the average angular acceleration of the disk? So let's make a list of what we know. The initial angular speed is 85 radians per second. The final angular speed is 25 radians per second. And the change in time is 4 seconds. So we need to use the same formula. So average acceleration is equal to the change and the angular velocity divided by the change in time. So that's going to be 25 minus 85 divided by 4. 25 minus 85 is negative 60. And if we divide that by 4, this will give us negative 15 radians per second squared. So what does the negative sign tells us about the angular acceleration? The reason why it's negative is because the disk is slowing down. Now this leads to a question. If the angular acceleration can be negative, can the angular velocity be negative? And what does that mean in terms of a spinning disk? So the disk can spin in two ways. It could spin in a clockwise direction, or it could spin in a counterclockwise direction. We're going to assign a positive value to the counterclockwise direction. Because if you took trig, this would represent an angle of positive 30 and this would represent an angle of negative 30. So keeping with that, we're going to say that a counterclockwise rotation will be positive and a clockwise rotation will be negative. So therefore, the angular speed or angular velocity will be positive when moving in the counterclockwise direction and negative when moving in the clockwise direction. So for our example, at one point, let's say at point A, the disk is spinning with an angle of velocity of positive 85 radians per second. And then after some time has elapsed, the disk is now moving with an angle of velocity of positive 25 in a counterclockwise direction. Now, because it's slowing down, that means that the angular acceleration has to be negative, which means the angular acceleration is in the opposite direction, since it's a negative 15 radians per second squared. So notice that the angular acceleration is directed clockwise, and clockwise has a negative sign. But the angular velocity is directed counterclockwise which has a positive sign. So that can help you to understand the positive and negative values of the angle of velocity and angle acceleration. So if the angle of velocity is positive, it means that it's spinning in one direction. And based on the way we assigned it, it's spinning in the counterclockwise direction. If the angle of velocity is negative, then the disk is going to be spinning in the clockwise direction. 
So hopefully that makes sense. So let's make a summary of a few key points that we need to know. So if omega is positive, and if alpha is positive, that is, if they're both directed in the counterclockwise direction, if they both have the same sign, the disk will speed up. It's going to spin faster and faster. In our last example, we see that the angular velocity, omega, had a positive sign. It was moving in a counterclockwise direction. But alpha, the angular acceleration, was negative, which means it was directed in the clockwise direction. Now, because these two are directed in opposite directions, the disk is going to slow down. So anytime omega and alpha share the same sign, if they're both positive or both negative, the disk will speed up. If omega and alpha contain opposite signs, be it positive and negative or negative and positive, then the disk will slow down. Number three, a disk with a diameter of 30 centimeters spins at a constant rate of 40 radians per second. What is the linear velocity of a point at the edge of the disk? And what is the radial acceleration of the disk? So let's say this is the disk. And the diameter is 30 centimeters, which means the radius is half of 30, so that's going to be 15 centimeters. Now we're concerned about a point at the edge of a disk, so it's 15 centimeters from the center. How can we find the linear velocity of that point? Linear velocity is equal to omega times r. And we have omega, the angular speed. That's 40 radians per second. And then if we multiply it by the radius, which is 15 centimeters, but we got to convert that to meters, and we could do that by dividing it by 100, this is going to be 0.15 meters, which I like to think of it as 0.15 meters per radian. So it's 40 times 0.15, so the linear velocity is 6 meters per second. So now that we have the linear velocity, how can we calculate the radial acceleration of the disk? So let's say if the point is not located at this position. The radial acceleration is the same as the centripetal acceleration. It always points towards the center of the circle. The centripetal acceleration, you can calculate it using this equation, v squared divided by r. So it's 6 squared divided by the radius of 0.15. 6 squared is 36, and 36 divided by 0.15 is 240. So it's 240 meters per second squared. Now let's move on to number 4. A disk with a radius of 1.5 centimeters speeds up from 20 radians per second to 100 radians per second in 2 seconds. What is the average angular acceleration of the disk? So how can we find the answer to this question? Well, we can use the same formula as we've been using. It's going to be the change in velocity, that is angular velocity, divided by the change in time. So the final angular speed is 100 radians per second, and the initial angular speed is 20 radians per second, and it went from 20 to 100 in 2 seconds. So 100 minus 20 is 80, so that's the change in angular speed divided by 2 seconds is going to be 40 radians per second squared. So that's it for part A. Now let's move on to part B. What is the centripetal acceleration of a point at the edge of the disk when the angular speed is 60 radians per second? So if the point is at the edge of the disk, that means that it's 1.5 centimeters from the center of the circle. So we can use a radius of 1.5 centimeters. So how can we calculate the centripetal acceleration, also known as the radial acceleration? 
the centripetal acceleration is v squared over r. And v is omega times r. So this is omega squared times r squared, which is r times r. And so we can use this equation. It's going to be omega squared times the radius. So we're using an angular speed of 60. We can't use 20 or 100 because the angular speed is not constant. So we're using the average angular speed. So it's going to be 60 squared times the radius, which is 1.5 centimeters. But if we divide that by 100, that's 0 0.015 meters. 60 squared is 3,600 times 0 0.015. So the centripetal acceleration is 54 radians, I mean meters, per second squared. Now, how can we find the answer to part C? What is the net acceleration of the point in part B? Well, let's draw a picture. So let's get rid of most of the stuff that we have here. So let's start by drawing a circle. Now let's say the point is currently at that position. At that point, there is an upward centripetal acceleration that points towards the center of the circle. And the angular acceleration is positive, which means that it's directed in the counterclockwise direction based on the way we defined it. So at this point, the angular acceleration is in that direction. Now we need to calculate the net acceleration, which should be directed here. However, we need to change this value. We need to convert that into the tangential acceleration. To find a tangential acceleration, it's equal to the angular acceleration times r. So the angular acceleration is 40 radians per second squared. And the radius is 0 0.015 meters. So 40 times 0 0.015. The tangential acceleration is pretty small. It's only 0 0.6 meters per second squared. So here we have the tangential acceleration, and now we need to use it to calculate the net acceleration. So the net acceleration is the vector sum of these two. So if you turn it to a right triangle, it will look like this. This is the tangential acceleration. This is the centripetal acceleration. And that's the net acceleration, which is the hypotenuse of the right triangle. So the net acceleration, we can calculate it using this formula. It's going to be the square root of the square of the centripetal acceleration plus the square of the tangential acceleration. So the centripetal acceleration is 54 meters per second squared, and the tangential acceleration is 0.6 squared. So the final answer should be close to 54, because it's much larger than 0.6. So it's going to be about 54. 0 0.003 meters per second squared. So as the disk increases in speed, the centripetal acceleration becomes more significant and the tangential acceleration becomes negligible. So if the tangential acceleration is held constant, as you increase the speed, the centripetal acceleration greatly increases because it depends on the square of the speed. So if you double the speed, the centripetal acceleration increases by a factor of 4. 2 squared is 4. So at high speeds, the net acceleration is approximately equal to the centripetal acceleration. But at low speeds, and if the object is accelerating quickly, then the net acceleration will be dependent on both. But at very high speeds, this becomes insignificant, so the net acceleration is almost equal to the centripetal acceleration.